And there is, speaking of layers, there's one other thing I want to show you with these paints. There's all different kinds of paints. And all different paints behave differently. And one thing that I found with these paints is they are, they're very transparent. And that's a great thing that you can use to your advantage. Uh, people that do watercolors use, uh, take advantage of transparency. And so the transparency is a good thing as long as you know that that's their, their style. That's the character that they have. So it's always good when you get a paint the first time you use it to do the color wheel, see how the color wheels play together, and then to create a transparency chart. And all I did was I just took a marker and I made a line. And that line of black then will just paint over it. And I'm taking, going right down. See, now I have pretty, pretty good thickness of paint on there. And I'm going to do that with every color. The reason for that is, let's say uh, you have colors in your landscape. Uh, you have a red field, and you want to go over it, and you want to put, make a little green on top of it or, or change the color. Well, if the paint that you're using is very transparent, it's not going to, you're still going to see that red. It's going to be hard to cover that red. So you either, either have to use a lot of paint or you have to maybe add a little black. That's when black will come in handy or another color. White will also make it more opaque. So let's go ahead and we'll put these colors on and see which colors. See this one, as I put it on a little thicker, I'll even do two sides, you can see. See where I have the paint thicker, you don't see the black line as well. And right there where it's thinner, I can go very thin. So it's, it's really wonderful that you can do both, that you can get it thick and thin and transparent or opaque. And you'll notice that none of these colors get very opaque. That one is a nice color. You can't see through that one at all. Now, if you're just starting with a, a color line, what's nice to do is to actually write the names of the colors on your palette, because I don't know how many times I've, I've talked to people about mixing and said, oh, try this one and that one, and they're like, now, which, which blue was that? Was that the dark or the medium or the light? So it's nice to just go ahead and write right on there. You know, if this is orange, just write orange. So that you know that that's, that's your color. And then and as you're mixing, you'll remember. You kind of get into a rhythm, and you'll see which colors. That's a nice opaque red. As you see, it's nice to have a roll of paper towels handy to kind of, once you get your brush clean, you want to just swish it around in the water. And if you put it on the paper towel, you can tell right away if I still have any paint left on there because I'll see the colors. All right, we're running out of the black line here. Let's see. Let's see how that viridian color works. So you get the idea to just just make a little chart that you can, again, tack up in your studio next to your, your color wheel. And we'll put that aside. 